Hello, Phyllis, this is Dr. Newtopia. We have been friends for so long and we experienced so many good things, especially when we were at UMass and challenging the system. We were real partners in that challenging the system. We would challenge the chancellor and we would challenge speakers who came to UMass and really got them to think more on the level of everyone needs equality. I want to thank you for all the great memories. When I think of UMass, I think of you. What was so fine about my experience knowing you was that we lived right near each other. So every night I would come over to your house and you'd let me in the back door, that sliding glass door. And we would just talk about philosophy and men, feminism, and what is wrong with the world. We were problem solvers. And you helped me become a woman and a futurist. Speaking of futurist, I'm going to be teaching a Introduction to Future Studies class at the Maker House. It's not like an academic course, it's just going to be more like a salon. And people are going to discuss very is various issues about the future. I'm seeing it more like a think together process that people with their computers can come and we can all start brainstorming together about what kind of future we want. And of course that future for us, from our perspective, is about creating peace and justice in the world. And when we have that foundation of peace and justice, then I think that we can start thinking of a global utopian society what I call Newtopia. You have been one of my best supporters in this uh, ideology of creating the better world. And I want to thank you for that. And all the hours that you spent editing my work, I want to thank you for that. When I came over to your house or when we went out for Chinese food, you spent hours with me going over my essays, reading every line of it. I would read it out loud and then we would discuss it. And you're, you would bring wonderful ideas into my thinking. There has been no one else like you in my life. No one. And of course, now that I'm in Tucson, Arizona, without a friend like you, it is a lonely existence. I am intellectually isolated in a lot of ways. However, I am part of the Occupy movement and I have friends that are socialists there. I met Cindy Sheehan. I got to interview her this year when she came for the Alliance for Global Justice Conference. I also want to say a few words about the peace movement. I have come to realize that we wanted instant peace. We wanted nuclear disarmament now, and I still want those things. But the way human history works and the way these social movements works that we have been a part of is that it takes a long time. And I'm sorry about this. I don't know how much longer the human race has as far as what's happening with the ecology. But it seems like progress just takes a long time. And you have been part of this peace movement. I will never forget you in your wheelchair at the nursing home with the sign it, that says, war is not the answer. And it's not. And finding peace, well, what I've done about that is after 
my experience with domestic violence, I started doing yoga every day. I know yoga is important to you as well. I actually got a teaching certificate in yoga, even though I haven't really become a yoga teacher. It has enriched my practice to be able to uh, at least theoretically be able to teach yoga. So that's about the news for me, and I wish the best for you. Anne keeps me informed about you, and so does Izelle, and all your other friends that are on email. I get to read what they have to say about you as well. I want to wish you the best in everything. There are more dimensions in this world than we cannot see. And my heart goes out to you. Everything is about transition from one state to another. Goddess bless you.